Hey, welcome to the show. On today's show, we are rebuilding this. Hey, welcome back to The First Layer. I'm so glad you're here with me today. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week where we explore the world of 3D printing. And today is no different because what we're doing is we are stripping down this ANET A8 that's been around for a while. And we are going to make it into an ANET M8. And that uh, all it really is is we're taking it and we're putting it onto a metal frame to give it a little bit more rigidity and uh, to make it a better printer overall. Now, does a frame make a better printer? Absolutely it does. You can see that the A-Net has got a lot of printed parts on it. I'll just swing it around here a little bit for you. See, we've got some bracing here. We've got a little bit of bracing down here in the front, some in the back. And the reason that we do that uh, on our A-nets is because the acrylic tends to pull in, which can cause problems with your overall print. So today we're going to put it all onto 2040 extrusion. We have all of our extrusion cut, we have all of our nuts and bolts, we have all of our printed parts, and this A-net A8 metal frame uh, you can find on Thingiverse. All of the bill of materials are there, all the printed parts are there, and I will link to it in the description down below for today's show. All right, so let's get started. We're just going to go ahead and disassemble this, and when I come back, we are going to start the assembly. Okay, so now we've got everything disassembled. As you can see, we've got a big mess of stuff on our table. So we're going to start now with starting to build the Y-axis frame. And with that, we need some printed parts. We need two of these, one of these. And what these are, these are just the corner brackets that go underneath of them. Once you put these on, you can actually add rubber feet to them, and that will help to dampen vibration that's coming from the printer down into any tabletop. We don't have any here, but I've got some at home, so <clears throat> we'll put them on at another time. All right, so let's get started. We need to take our button head screws, which are these little guys, and I'll just uh, switch over to this other camera so you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, so we've got these little button head screws. They're kind of rounded off, they're nice looking screws, so let's go ahead and start putting this together. I've got the instructions right there, right there, on the, uh, on the screen, and I keep stepping on stuff. So let's go ahead and start putting this together. Now we're not using the rounded corner brackets. You don't need the rounded ones. These square ones will do just fine. So we've got our hammer nuts. We've got some of those. And what we're going to do is just going to flip this over, throw in a couple of hammer nuts, and we'll start lining this piece up. Now what these hammer nuts do is when they go into a channel, they will turn and lock themselves into the channel. So something to keep in mind when you're putting together a brand new printer. So we're going to go ahead and line these up as best we can, put a screw through there, grab our proper Allen key, which looks like this one. Nope course that one's too big. All right let's go back to the straight on camera. So we're just going to go ahead and start putting this together um, and then we will move ahead from there. Alrighty so now we've got the frame together or at least our Y axis frame together and we need some more parts so we're just going to dig into our bag because it's now time to start setting up some of the pieces that we need for the bed and for the motor mounts and all of these little guys right here we're going to need as well. So these guys we don't need just yet. I'll put them back in the in the thing in the thing of the thing. Yeah I think that's the thing. All right 
So first and foremost, it wants us to put these little guys on, and they're going to go right there. And that is for, I believe, these two rods right here. Now we're reusing some of our material. And we need a couple of M3 hex nuts, which we should have left over from our initial build. So we're going to get that started. We'll just kind of get these set in place and we'll worry about, you know, the length of them in just a moment. And we'll worry about their exact placement in just a moment because they don't really tell you in the instructions what the exact placement is. But let's get a hex nut that we have left over from our deconstruction of the other one. And... We are going to take, how many of these, we need two of them for this side, a couple of M3 washers, an M3 by 20 screw. That one might be difficult. Oh no, we grabbed some M3 by 20s, I believe. So in the bottom here, let me go to the top camera, you guys can see that. In the bottom there is a little nut trap. You're just going to place that M3 nut into, and then you're going to get your M3 screw, which I know that we brought some here. And there we go, they're right here. And we're going to take a washer, put that wa put that washer through. Now looking at the bill of materials, I believe it told us to get 25s, not 20s. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Let me just pull up the bill of material here real quick. I love computers. Let's just open up that bill of material real quick and have a quick peek at it. M3 by 25. Yeah. Boy, did they get that wrong. Because I think that's going to be a, well, it may not be a little bit too long, but we'll. Oh, yeah, for sure that's going to be way too long. To hold that in there. Let's go back to the build guide here. Let's see what it shows us. Yeah, that's kind of weird. So while we change these four 25s out, we're going to go and get some 20s. Maybe even some that are a little smaller than that. I think I might actually even go to 16s. Because I think a 16 will be long enough. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the frame together. We've put our bearings on the frame as well. Um, these still aren't adjusted, so we are going to do some fine adjustment afterwards. Right now, we're going to get our um, uprights put on, and we're going to get those as close as we can. And then we are going to fire in a couple of bolts and get those started. And then again, we're going to have to square this up too. So we're going to have to make sure that we're equal distance on either side. So we're going to go ahead, continuing on with the M5 button head screws. And uh, then we're going to just start assembling the motor mounts. We've got our main motor mount here for the uh, Y axis. We've also got our um, end stop. Uh, located here on the back and uh, now it's just a matter of squaring everything up once we get the frame together then we can start adding some more of the upright rods put on the X gantry and start wiring everything together so let me go ahead and put these on and we'll come right back well we've made a lot of progress on putting this together the parts aren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination um, we did do our best to to get everything set, we still got a few things to do on this. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, this is going to be a two-parter, easily. 
because um, we can only cover so much material in one day. But we got all the major parts on. We've had a look at it. Uh, it looks good. It's nice and square. We have to put some feet on it. So this is going to end up being a two-parter, guys. Um, we've got a couple more parts that we have to print out that I forgot to print out. And we've got one or two parts that aren't great. So tell you what we're going to do. We're going to actually put this other piece on uh, for the motor mount. Then we've got all of our motor mounts on and we will mount up the motors and the X carriage because the X carriage in this particular upgrade, if I can get all of the cords out here, the X carriage you're going to reuse it just as it is. You're not changing the X carriage size at all. So um, some of the things that we did differently, we got rid of the H frame and we replaced it with a aluminum bed. Uh, we do have to make one slight modification to the aluminum bed. We have to cut out a chunk of metal here so that it can bypass the motor and actually hit the end stop. Um, but other than that, I think it's working out pretty good. So Jess is sitting over at the controls. She's eager to get this thing back home. We're going to do our best to keep going on it. Uh, but for now, I want to thank all of my Patreons for their support of the channel. You guys are amazing. You're wonderful. Love it. If you want to become a supporter on Patreon, we're doing some special videos over there, uh, specifically right now on painting. And you can find that over at patreon.com slash the first slayer. And if you just feel the need to buy me a coffee, you can do that too. Or you can even buy Jess a coffee. She drinks coffee. And uh, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. And uh, all that money goes into the same little pot to help out get stuff for the show. Um, I want to thank Spool3D for all of their support. Without them, we wouldn't have the nuts and bolts that we needed. Um, to put this together. We had to do a few modifications uh, from the actual bill of materials, but like I said, I'll put all that, that's all down in the description below so you can go ahead and uh, find where you can get that on Thingiverse. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, spool3d.ca, print it right, print it with spool3d.ca. They've got everything you need from printers to parts, accessories, and everything that you need to build your own 3D printer. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Remember, print it right, print it with spool3d.ca. Again, friends, thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all well, and I hope that you're all treating your neighbors as well as you are feeling today. And uh, go ahead and do something nice for somebody. On behalf of Jess, me, and Spool3D, and the first layer, remember, the first layer is always your first choice, or your foundation. I can't even remember my own tagline. Let's try that one more time. Take two. <laughs> Just remember, friends, that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Until next time, and we get into part two of building this. Have a great day.